Hey weirdos, welcome back. This is going to be episode four of the pod. Stop it, that's weird. And we have a guest today. Hello. Which, before I say anything, did you, uh, did you hear that? Did you hear that little, that little intro tune? <gasps> oh, I wonder who made it. Ah, I know. They seem super cool. It was me. <laughs> yeah, Matt. Matt made, it. made it for the pod. Yeah. I'm, I'm also the cool. guest. It's cool. It's so cute. Thank you. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. Uh, which, all to say, yes, I am the guest for today. Very honored to be here. Uh, I'm Matt. You, I guess I need to intro myself. Uh, I, didn't yeah. pre- I didn't prepare this part. Um, you uh, might know me from TikTok, which is something I've never said before, and I did not like saying <laughs> that out loud. Uh, but I guess it's true. Uh, You might also know me from uh, just life, I guess, but I doubt it. Um, I am a late diagnosed autistic. Ding. And what else is interesting to know about me? There's not much. Um, If you were an ice cream, what would you be? uh, (sighs) For a while, I stole that question from you. Yeah, yeah. And you said you were the birthday cake one. Uh Uh-huh. Which, that's good. I've always said in the past, I don't know if it's still true, but I might be reclaiming these as my roots again. I've always said I've, I'm like a, a raspberry sorbet. It's a little fun. It's yeah. a, little, a little different. I don't want to say the key fruity. word, but uh, not, you know, a little quirky. I'm just going to throw that out there. But yeah. Yeah, a little raspberry sorbet. I feel like that's fun. Mm-hmm. It's got a little, a little zest, dare I say, with a raspberry. It's a little bit of a, a zestier Zesty. fruit. It's sure. the whitest thing I've ever said. <laughs> um, yeah, super happy to be here and talk all things, yeah. all things, all things neurodivergent. Yeah. It's it is rad that you created the song. Um, I got to put in the description <laughs> Trisha's song created for this show, <laughs> created yeah. for this show. So yeah, cool. I uh, you know it was one of those things where i blacked out for two hours and then i reappeared and i was like who made that that's pretty fun and uh i think it was me but i don't really remember yeah and then you sent it to me and i as soon as i hit play i was literally like (laughs) (laughs) that's what it's all about i was literally literally jumping up and down i was like this if i like if you condensed my little body see if you if you were a song that's what you would be. If I was a what you're song, I would good. be Trisha's song. That's good. If I were a song, I would be... Oh, I shouldn't have set this up for myself. I don't have an answer. Um, it'll be the last thing I say on the pod. you got to listen to find out. It'll buy me more time, too. That's, that's what <sighs> we'll do. We'll have to come back to that. Make a note. <laughs> if um, Matt yes. was a song... <laughs> I'm just gonna, you're going to hear me furiously typing in the background and Googling for yeah. songs. I have a um, pen and paper. Can you see my terrible handwriting? That's not that bad. <laughs> um, <clears throat> speaking of TikTok, I threw yeah. out a little, a, little, a little question to my yeah. people. Before, before you get to that, yeah. do we, is, it, is it interesting to talk about how we met or how long we've known each other? <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. Go ahead. I want to hear your this, side of the story. Is, no, okay. no, I want to hear your side. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Matt and I have known each other for years, you guys. We go way We're back. besties. We go so far back. Um, three weeks maybe or something. I I said I've said before I don't have any concept of time. So oh, I would. I uh, three weeks is a bold guess. I would Two, think. You think? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Two weeks. It feels longer. I think. It does feel a lot longer than that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so what happened was, I opened tiktok and my algorithm is sharply curated (laughs) to my neurodivergent tendencies and your little face just popped up randomly on my for you page and you were like i'm so lonely (laughs) i don't have anybody cool to talk to I just like <laughs> I'm looking for a specific person. It was a real name. sad boy Maybe moment. Yeah, tea. I was like, Are there any Trisha Millers out there could put put in in the hands of the algorithm, and it really it really should. Right. Be. Who are 
funny creative geniuses if they could just comment on this video and we could become friends um that would people be great. way cooler so than me can you comment on this video and put me in my place and that's what you did <laughs> that doesn't sound like me very much <laughs> um yeah I, I think i just commented like the the algorithm is really algorithming today or something like that something mm-hmm. dumb and was like um yeah like i'm a creative i'm a poet i have a yeah a, a useless creative writing degree and we should be friends and then then what happened uh and then i said no and then you kept messaging me over and over until right. i finally gave in yeah and i'm begrudgingly here and i'm so happy to be here <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't even know. Maybe I reached out. Well, I guess technically you reached out first with the comment, but I think I messaged you mm-hmm. because I mm-hmm. looked at your profile because I got a ton of mm-hmm. comments on that video. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I was looking, I specifically threw a call out to any late diagnosed autistic creatives and uh, got a ton of responses. So then I had to, f- I felt bad, but I felt like I was on The Bachelor or The Bachelor. Which one? The Bachelor is the one with one guy. You're right. Yes. Okay. So I felt like I was on The Bachelor and I had to like go through mm-hmm. and just like, because I can't message like it has like over 100 comments. I was like, I can't message everybody. And I can't I, possibly reach no. out to every person. Uh, I'm a mere boy. Um, so I had to do a little selecting, which felt very strange. But yeah. And then your profile just fit the vibe. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. and you were. I don't actually know how, though, because <laughs> If anyone don't go look at my TikTok. Hey, it was don't it do was that. it was the Lord of the Rings Smasher Pass. That's why I was like, oh, okay. Really? <laughs> that and then you you had another skit in there that I was like, that's pretty funny. Mm. Well, <laughs> and since then we we've been uh, chatting quite a bit. Like yeah. we've been, we become little buddies over yeah. the past couple of weeks. And talking a lot about neurodivergence. And so both of you, I guess this is like important to say, is that both of us yeah. uh, were very recently diagnosed. Yes. So I think that's like something that has uh, a common thread that like brought us together. Is we've done a lot of like, hey, have you had this experience? Have you mm-hmm. had that experience? And not surprisingly or maybe not so surprisingly, we're both like, yeah, I do that too. Yeah, yeah, this past, I mean, it's been a little, probably two months for me now. Um, yeah. And every day there's a new, like, oh, that was an autism thing growing up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. The, well, maybe we'll get into it later, but there's been a couple yeah, yeah, yeah. where yeah, we were talking. <laughs> yeah, one uh, a couple of days ago. And we I was like, like, holy fuck. That's crazy that we both do that exact, very specific same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so here we are. And it's been, yeah, a couple weeks. So here we are. A great couple weeks. It's crazy. Here we go. New friends. Here's to new friends. I just have water, but cheers. Me too. <laughs> cheers. Um, should we get into the questions? Yeah. Okay. Do you want one? I prepped you on a couple. Do you want one you <clears throat> haven't heard or one you've heard? Surprise me. Hmm. If you were an ice cream... No, I'm just fucking with you. Um, <laughs> I like... The, this is a good one. This is a good, like, soft launch, I think. Uh, okay. <laughs> How do you make friends? Like, genuinely. How do you form meaningful, long-lasting connections? Mm, d- difficultly. <laughs> yes. Trial and error, maybe? Yeah. Uh, you know what my experience has been is, like, my two best friends I met about a decade ago when I was working. We were all working as writers for, uh, like, this marketing firm. And saying marketing firm is, like, generous yeah um but we were all just working as writers and I, like i would just put on my headphones and just like write my articles every day yeah and through like the small amount of conversation that i had with the both of them they were both extremely like persistent with me and they're like trisha we think you're cool and like we should hang out and i was like okay and just like I don't know if that's like a neurodivergent thing that I like don't believe people when they say they like me, but yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, they had to be like pretty persistent with me before I was like, oh yeah, no, like I can see how we will, we would get along. And finally it was like, yeah, let's hang out outside of work. And now like a decade later, they're uh, my two best friends in the world. Yeah. My, 
my t- my like two or three best friends came from like college and everything but i have had to have a new experience of trying to meet friends in adulthood or like post college mm-hmm. or post situations where opportunities like that aren't just really like thrown your way as much anymore mm-hmm. um and for a long time i didn't do anything about it i was like ah it'll just come to me whatever but then honestly I just, well, one, I made that TikTok and a ton of people were like me, uh, which Mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know, I might have a skewed perspective on this, but I feel like that probably would be the response if you were to make something similar and like put it in an online space. Like I found that really comforting because it was kind of less scary than like putting yourself out there in real life because if I put myself out Mm. there online and then no one commented, I could just delete the video and act like it never happened. Uh, (laughs) Just so true. But... Uh, because also like I think that ties into like rejection sensitivity which can be really tough yeah Um, but I think like TikTok especially is very curated for autistic minds and neurodivergent people Uh, and so there's a lot of community on there and just finding those common interests like for me it's really safe to like try to connect with people in an online space like it's but it's also just can be just as meaningful so that's always helped yeah so true yeah honestly i mean not that i've had like an extensive experience with the the neurodivergent community on tiktok but like i haven't i haven't had any negative experiences with it you know like putting myself out there or like yeah trying to connect with other people on different videos or where have you um it's a really supportive community as far as i've seen like people are uh it's hard it see it feels and it is sometimes hard to find those other people but then once you do and you like reach out i've I've really never had a negative experience like it just yeah. people are all kind of looking for that same thing that connection so mm-hmm. it's like a difficult first step to do you know and yeah. it might you got to keep putting yourself out there which is hard but and if you make enough yeah. TikToks, eventually Trisha will just comment and say the algorithm is really <laughs> exactly. algorithming today, and then you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Eventually, I will see it, and I'll say something <laughs> super funny and clever. And then you get to be a guest on the podcast, <laughs> if you'd be so lucky. Um, that question was from Chloe. Thank you for asking, Chloe. That was, Thanks, Chloe. That's a very good question. Uh, we can move on. I like this one. Um can I ask to sit down in a professional setting where everyone else is standing? Thoughts on other energy-related invisible accommodation ideas, specifically in regards to operating during periods of burnout or coming out of burnout? This was way too personal of a question for me. <laughs> mm, it was, explain. Well, uh, I first realized it really clicked with me that I was late diagnosed autistic when I had been in burnout for essentially years and had no idea And then eventually, Mm -hmm. you know, I thought it was all these other things that were like all these other symptoms that kind of made sense, but not really. And then for whatever reason, one day I just Googled uh, or I searched on TikTok actually was autistic burnout and it just like clicked, just everything fell into place. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what I've been going through. Um, Mm -hmm. And then since then, uh, less so in these past few weeks, but in the months before this, like since realizing I was in burnout and giving myself the permission to be burnt out, I really started to feel more tired because I was finally letting my body be tired and not trying to push through it. Totally. And then eventually I work fully from home, which is a real luxury and uh, so nice to be able to do. So, but like since then it's been like camera off for meetings whenever possible, working from bed whenever possible. So uh, I can definitely empathize with like professional setting and workplace burnout and just like autistic burnout and burnout in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I don't know what you think, Trisha. I would think yeah, it one. Yes. I feel like, yes, you can ask to sit down and when people are standing, I think that's 100% fine. Um, how you go about it would yeah. depend on your context of if your work knows you have a neurodivergent diagnosis or they don't or how accommodating it is. Like there's different ways to go about it, yeah. I think, but um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, <clears throat> um, I don't know how much I've, like, specifically said or how much I want to say about, like, specifically where I work. But, you know, it's, like, yeah. a pretty corporate setting. So 
like I can understand both sides of it. N- number one, like, yeah, I think it's super fair for you to ask for that kind of accommodation. And it's like, you know, it's not bothering anybody to for you to be able yeah. to like sit if you want to. Um, and then the other thing is like, yeah, it depends on how comfortable you are talking to yes. your boss about it. Like I specifically went to my boss and was like, hey, this is my diagnosis. This is my specific diagnosis. And here are some accommodations that I feel like I need. Are you guys oh, okay nice. with that? And I know that a, a lot of people don't have that luxury or they don't feel safe to disclose that specific kind of information or they mm-hmm. don't feel like their workplace would be super supportive. So if that's the case, I think you could maybe still go about it in a way where you're like speaking in more general terms and saying like, yeah. I have like a disability or a medical condition or something yeah. uh, of the like where you could like put in the same type of request but maybe not feel so vulnerable or unsafe to say you know I'm autistic or I'm neurodivergent or what have you um, yeah. if you feel like you know you might get some kind of strange treatment or retaliation or something like that I know it, it can be kind of tricky for people who work in like corporate America like I do yeah yeah I uh, I reached out to my direct manager and just told them that I hey I got this diagnosis and here's what I'm gonna do be camera off for all these things and like they are the only person that directly knows about it even though when I'm in meetings there's a ton of other people and I'm the only one with my camera off I just kind of force myself to not care about what those other people might think because odds are they're probably not thinking about it and then if they are I it's not my problem to think about that like as long as you know it doesn't conflict with my uh, standing in the workplace or whatever, like professional standing in the workplace. Um, yeah, that's, it is, it's a, like, that is a good point. It's a, like, it is a heavy burden to carry. I often find myself worrying about, I've said this a bunch on the podcast before about like my perception, how I feel I'm being perceived by others, Mm -hmm. which can be such a burden if you're like, no one has technically said that it bothers them, but you're like one step ahead and you're like, am I being disruptive to this meeting? Yeah. Are people judging me because I'm accommodating myself or whatever, which can be really difficult. But if you can try to just be like kind to yourself and, and try to like pass yeah. that burden back onto the people, like if, if they don't say that it's a problem, I would, I would assume that it's not a problem. Absolutely. And in regards to, uh, just other energy related accommodations or invisible accommodation yeah. ideas. Um, I actually asked mm-hmm. this exact question probably just like a week before you and I met. Um, Cause I was going to mm-hmm. get flown out for a work event. It didn't end up happening. Uh, but I asked TikTok the same thing. And one thing that I got a lot in the comments was if it's over, if you're going on like a work trip, you can pretend you're getting sick over the amount of time you're like working. So then you have like a physical mm. reason or whatever. I know when someone mm. said that and then it got a ton of likes, I was like, that person is playing like 4D chess. That is incredibly forward <laughs> thinking. <yeah. laughs> um, but then I would say also like if you can't, if for whatever reason you can't sit down or do a specific accommodation, you can still find other more subtle accommodations that don't need to be like, I don't know, professionally tracked. Like you could take a 15 minute bathroom break every couple hours where you just sit in that like sensory deprivation area makeshift area yeah um Mm -hmm. or something like that or try to find you know move your to quieter places every once in a while or headphones or what have you but it does depend on your line of work of course yeah yeah that's great people are so much smarter than me on the internet that's yeah i love that suggestion just lie you know what i mean yeah like, just don't tell the truth yeah exactly they don't yeah. it's none of their fucking business well, anyway no no, no, no no here's what you do you walk in one day on stilts so everyone thinks you're super tall and then when you sit when you're actually sitting down you look like you're standing there you go yeah and then right. no one would know the difference the logistics of how you get the stilts under the table and stuff might be a problem but you can sort that out later you build a big table and bring it in the night before next question we have right. next question. <laughs> <laughs> uh that that was from uh matt and it was not me i swear to god thank you matt for asking that question okay well um and then we have one thanks from... matt <laughs> 
we have another one from uh weasel love it uh i would love to hear you talk about how you understand and think about the relationship between autism and ocd which i thought was really fascinating uh so for those who don't know i did i started my account on tiktok as like uh, just a catalog of my thoughts around ocd because i was diagnosed with it but Mm -hmm. since Mm -hmm. it's been really interesting because since getting the autism diagnosis i've had a lot of realizing of like oh do i really have ocd or is it just like autistic black and white thinking that gets played up to the Mm. max oh interesting which i don't really have an answer to and personally like i don't need to have an answer to because it's the same experience either way sure um but the relationship between them i think how i think about it is like one it could just be my autistic black and white thinking that has been categorized Mm -hmm. as ocd but if it's better under autism whatever or like yes there is ocd traits but then like my autistic black and white thinking can kind of heighten the sensitivity of the ocd and like make it stick more uh, yeah. Which I don't know if you experience like black and white thinking. I assume I I would assume you do. I don't know if we talked about it specifically. Yeah, I don't. I, I guess that is something that we haven't particularly talked about for sure. I've noticed, especially like you know, I think that I have like a fairly keen sense of humor, but sometimes, yeah. especially over text, <laughs> like if my friends text me a joke, sometimes I like just don't get it right away until yeah. I like think on it for like five minutes and then i'm like oh wow okay (laughs) they didn't literally mean you know whatever i was gonna say yeah um the ocd thing is really interesting to me i don't think i've talked about this on the podcast yet but right when i was diagnosed i remember like talking to my friends about some symptoms that i was having and i had this the way that i like arrived at my diagnosis was I felt like I had kind of a little bit of everything if that makes sense yes me too. like I was like I was like I feel I know that I have anxiety like I've been diagnosed with that I feel like I have specific OCD tendencies I have um literally every other symptom just flew out of my brain as I was speaking but you know what I mean like Like, I felt a little bit depressed I felt for sure ADHD um so I felt like when I was talking to my therapist I'd be like I just like I don't understand I don't feel like I am enough OCD to be OCD or I don't have enough anxiety for it to to like get a prescription or something for like um yeah like panic disorder or something like that So I talked to my friends a bunch about that and I was just like, I know, I just felt at my core that there was like an overarching thing that could explain why all of these symptoms were so linked to each other and why like a lot of times I would lead to like a shutdown or whatever. Like it was, it was like a domino effect, you know, like one thing would happen that made me really anxious and then I would maybe feel kind of depressed and then yeah. some OCD stuff would happen and then it would just completely, like, every time lead me to a shutdown where I would just, like, be in bed for days and I couldn't do anything. Yeah. Um. So does that, I don't think that answers their question about, uh, <laughs> I don't think no, that I think, answers No, I, I think so. I, I would totally think so. Like, I feel this, I totally feel the same way of yeah. feeling a little bit of everything of, because, like, tiktok fucking knows man it will serve you like yeah. i would get an adhd thing then an autistic thing then an ocd uh-huh. thing and then uh-huh. a whatever thing and i'd be like god kind of but like not really and then yeah and, and it just kept happening like with adhd specifically i was like i know i don't have adhd but i was like i know i have some weird executive function things going on uh-huh yeah and like same with the anxiety where i was like it's been there my whole life but it's not like excessive Mm-hmm. and then yeah and then when the autism realization came in it was just like oh here you go here's yeah. here's the one yeah. missing puzzle piece yeah all of these things are connected it's just in like a totally you know different way than i ever expected with the ocd stuff in particular like i knew so after i was diagnosed and you and i have talked about this a little bit that like I've gone back in my genealogy, in my oh, yeah. family tree. Oh, and yeah, I'm baby. Like, 
Yeah, people in my family very close to me are, I'm certain. Yeah, I'm like, I could ruin some family members' self-perception if I wanted to. For sure, absolutely. Um, And, like, um, I don't know if I should, I'll just say, my dad, like, has a lot of um, OCD. Mine too. Like, specifically OCD things that he does. Um, And some of those, I feel like, have kind of been passed on to me. Because, like, you know, I think there's, the, like, and I, I've been guilty of this before, too, like, um, repetitive behaviors that aren't necessarily, like, an impulse can't, like, what am I trying to say? When you, like, the way that I talk, I've talked about it before or, like, in general conversation about OCD, I think it's easy to say, like, oh, I have OCD tendencies when you're just yeah. talking about kind of repetitive behaviors <laughs> yes. and it's not necessarily like a clinical, like, yeah. like uh, medical thing where you can't yeah. stop doing the thing. I think I have a few of those kinds of tendencies where it is repetitive to the point where it's like tiring and uh, frustrating for me to like mm-hmm. not be able to not do that thing. But again, like... Even, you know, I think on a, yeah, it's just not, it's not enough maybe of a disruption in my everyday life that I could be like diagnosed fully with OCD. So, yeah. And since like realizing and getting this diagno- like uh, the autistic diagnosis, it's like, even when I got the diagnosis, it was a nice revelation because it gave me a framework to work within. But I also, it's like, even if I didn't get it, everything I was experiencing would still be the exact same that I'm experiencing now. Like the experience mm-hmm. doesn't change whether I get diagnosed with X, Y, or Z. It's still the same experience yeah, sort of so thing. True. But it just gave me a nice framework. And so like, I enjoy this question for the intellectual aspect of it of like, Oh yeah, what is the mm-hmm. relationship? But at the end of the day, like yeah. if I start to spiral about it, I'm like, whatever, what I'm experiencing is what I'm experiencing. And whether I have a name yeah. for it or not, it's still there. So yeah, so true. My therapist has said something really similar. And I think it's kind of cool. I might just be speaking for myself, but it is kind of cool to like separate the two. Like yeah. OCD oh, yeah. or or you know what I mean? Like this is autism and yes. it's a separate thing and it feels very separate to individual diagnoses of other yeah. things. You know, it's what I super mean? oh yeah, it's super Even helpful. Though, even though it is linked a little bit and there's you can kind of classify symptoms in that way i yeah. think it is really like healthy and helpful oh, yeah. to like see autism as its own like autonomous thing 100 percent. weasel i hope that answers your question thanks weasel i'm just picturing an actual weasel just furiously <laughs> typing on tiktok um well, okay we have one more question someone draw that somebody draw that <laughs> And tag us, please. At uh, <laughs> oh, there's no there's no pod TikTok yet. <laughs> we don't have, we don't have that yet. You're gonna have to find one of us. Editor, somehow. editor, put know. the editor put the name in post. <laughs> Add it in post. Uh, Trish is the. I'll put editor. it in the description. Uh, there you go. Um, okay, we have one more from Blep. How to form community Blip. with high support need autistics and how to navigate internalized ableism without hurting them and ourselves. What a great question. Yeah. One that, if I'm being upfront and honest, is very difficult for me to answer because I I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's a very good question. Yeah. yeah. I... Will you read the question one more time? <laughs> yeah. Um, how to form community with high support need autistics and how to navigate internalized, ab- a- internalized ableism without hurting yeah. them or ourselves. Okay. Sorry. I wanted to be thoughtful about the way that I yes. responded to this. And... Number one, like something that we talked about before we started recording was specifically for this podcast, like I I am a late diagnosed yeah. neurodivergent person and I wanted this to be an inclusive outlet for anybody who experiences any form of um, neurodivergence, no matter yeah. what that is, where you land on the spectrum, when you were diagnosed, any of that kind of thing. So I guess I just wanted to be clear about that, that like, even though I fall into a specific category and I am yeah. very, very new to this diagnosis and I'm very much like still figuring out 
my own symptoms and the language to describe my own experience in, um, there's a lot for me to learn. And I hope that I can uh, be lucky enough to like share this space and form a little community yeah. um, with anybody who falls with or who identifies as um, in that category. So... I don't know also. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, because I, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. The other thing, no, you're okay. The, um, the other thing is like, I feel it would po- probably, possibly be inappropriate for me to like tell someone who, like I don't personally identify as someone who has like high support needs yeah. necessarily. So if I was like, hey, this is what I think you should do and how you should run (laughs) your life. The call is coming from inside the house, yeah. (laughs) Right, exactly. They'd be like, okay, well, what makes you qualified for that? And I'd be like, I don't know, I'm not. I I have a podcast, idiots. I I know all the answers. (laughs) I got a microphone, listen to me. Yeah, I I feel like the one thing I could say that I feel like would be true would just be that it depends Mm -hmm. for every single, it's different for every single person like it would with any other kind of friendship. Like it's, everyone has unique needs that uh, like friends try to meet and it's just figuring out what that person Mm -hmm. does or does not need and enjoy and making that effort as you would with anybody else. But that's, as far as anything outside of that, I don't feel qualified to give advice. I know, yeah. I will say also just like, to my friend's credit um you know I always like I am the doom and gloom like worst case scenario thinker so when like I was so afraid to tell my best friends about my diagnosis I was like and I don't know why because they're the most supportive people ever yeah but I was like I I was so afraid of people treating me differently or them seeing me as a different person suddenly um that I held off on it for a little bit but then when I did share that with them they were very much like whatever you need kind of thing you know like if it, and, you know, even in the moment, if something comes up that you don't expect and you, you know, if we could change something that would make you more comfortable or accommodate you, like, we will do that. And so I know that that's not always the case for for yeah. everyone. But in my own personal experience, I have found that people will be much more kind than maybe you think that they will. Yeah. You never know until, you know, obviously you want to be in a safe space and like share that with people that you trust. But yeah, I think giving people the benefit of the doubt and just say and let let people be nice to you and support you. That's been my issue is that I don't give yes. people even the chance yes. to do it. Yes. You know, I literally like the other day I so I'm back home in my the home I grew up in and both my parents uh live here because that's how living with family works uh yeah you i was home and like they're both a fairly neurotypical i think you know my dad's got a little spice in there he doesn't really know about and i'm not gonna be the Mm -hmm. one to ruin that for him he's lived his life just fine (laughs) hey hey papa if you're listening (laughs) um and so they love bright led white overhead lighting Oh, I know. It is physically painful to my body when that is on in the house. Uh, And which actually, this is great. This goes right into my sensory nightmare of the week. Uh, Incredible. Is like they'll come home because they have to go out to an actual physical location to work. So then they'll come home and just turn all of the lights on. And it's I'm just like, oh, absolutely not. But but here's the but here's the thing. I don't say anything. (laughs) <laughs> oh god i don't even give them a chance because they my mom would be like oh of course absolutely yeah but i'm just still in that mode of like just the automatic accommodation yeah. for other people when it's like finally i'm realizing like oh i'm the person that needs the accommodation here yeah 100 1000 percent i've i've noticed even just like small things like um, if I haven't mentioned this before, I'm a D and D nerd, yeah. and so I I do like a girls' night D and D thing with yeah. my friends, and um, 
the way that we have to like set up this long table, I end up usually with my back right next to an AC unit. Uh oh. And it's just blasting on me the whole time. And my sweet bestie every time will be like, oh no, that's going to be so uncomfortable for Trisha. And she like tries to like be like, do you need a blanket? Do you want me to turn it off? What do you want? I'll give you Stop anything that you need. Stop perceiving me. Right. And so my brain is just like shivering and I'm like, I'm fine. I'm literally yeah. fine. I don't yeah. know why you, why would you think that I'm not fine? It's totally okay. But if I would just like say something, then I could resolve the problem. Why is that part so hard to just be like, yes, I do need something. Uh, because we didn't get to do that our whole lives is my guess. <laughs> If I wanted to play therapist for a second, just like, I feel like that kind of is a a late, maybe it's not, but like for me anyway, from what I experienced is like being a late diagnosed neurodivergent person, you have to learn to like, I, it it is mentally accepted in my brain. Like everything, there's no Mm -hmm. issue there, but like enacted in embodied acceptance is still taking a while to like, yeah. On the level of like daily choices like that, like the small stuff, like it's easy for me to be like, I accept yeah. that I have autism, but then there's a white mm-hmm. overhead light on and I don't do anything about it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like the action to actually actively doing yeah. something about it is the difficult part. What I'm finding that I do now sometimes is I'll like, you know, in that particular scenario, she would ask me if I needed something and I'd be like, no, I don't. And then my brain goes, yes, you do. Yes, you yeah. do. Yes, you do. Yeah. And so then I'll think about it for like, a minute or two and then i'm like actually it yeah, be, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, I, maybe i should get a blanket or something that is one of those things where the words leave my mouth before my brain has registered what i've said like my my mm-hmm. mouth is like i'm good and then my brain's like what the fuck did you just do like why did you do yeah why did you say that yeah. yeah like i'll walk into a place and they're like do you need do you want a water or anything and like i'm dying of thirst because it's 90 degrees out and i'm like <laughs> yes uh, no i'm all right that's okay and then i'm like Actually, uh, could could I Actually, now that I do now that you've made an extra trip without it, I'm gonna make you go once more and feel even worse <laughs> yeah, about it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's um, very funny to me. The idea the <laughs> that I'm just thinking in a mental image of like SpongeBob with like the driest yeah, mouth I don't, ever. I don't like, need I it. I don't need it. <laughs> I definitely don't need it. Yeah. Um, the the other sensory nightmare that I have going on, it's an active one in my life. It's the, the lighting isn't active anymore because my parents left to go on a camping vacation. So I just get to live like a little gremlin in a cave with all the lights off, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have one active one still. Uh, there is a nondescript smell coming from the fridge of something my parents definitely left in there that they forgot to like throw out. Mm. Don't really know where it's coming from. <laughs> I didn't make it. But I'm not having it. Describe the smell. Absolutely not. I think I would vomit live on air if I tried to right now. It's very... Well, here's what I've noticed is like sweet smells don't bother me. I don't love sweet... Like if like someone lit like a vanilla type candle or something, I'd be like, ooh, that smells a little too sweet for me. But it wouldn't make me like nauseous. But any like mm-hmm. savory smell, if I'm not in the mood for a savory mm-hmm. smell in that moment, it's mm-hmm, going to be mm-hmm. it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough one for me. Mm-hmm. And every time I open the fridge just to see what's going on in there, maybe some food has materialized that I forgot about prior. Yeah. I am bombarded with the smell and then I'm immediately like, "Oh yeah, I'm no longer hungry." Yeah. So, and so you're going to leave it there? <laughs> um next question <laughs> <laughs> okay. i mean maybe i i can't i can't i, I know it's got to go i just don't know where it's coming from and it's like not my fridge you know it's my parents fridge there's a ton of shit in there that's not mine and i'm just like i don't want to mm-hmm. touch any of it because i didn't make it mm. but there's a there's a th- there's a rogue tupperware in there somewhere that's wreaking havoc sure yeah 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 the this the episode because you screwed everything up and came on <laughs> today yeah. I have the pushed future. back two episodes um, that are, man, they're good. And <laughs> in, the, in the one following this, I, I have a mishap with a cucumber. <laughs> hey, is, hey, we've all been there. We've all been there. We've all been there. Hey, you ever had a cucumber mishap? <laughs> Boy, have if I. You haven't so, become... It's like a rite of pat. You haven't become an adult until you've had a cucumber mishap in one yeah. way or another. If you haven't 
almost thrown up <laughs> from a cucumber. You're not neurodivergent. I'm thinking of foods that have made me want to vomit recently now that we're on this topic. Maybe we shouldn't talk about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I Hey, food is like my favorite thing to talk about on this show. Are you having any sensitivity issues with food currently or no? Uh, I can't. I can't think of any i mean there's the the food thing that we talked about which isn't a sensitivity it's just like oh yeah quirk no yeah let's talk peculiarity let's talk about that okay (laughs) um i think that's trademarked you can't say that um i can't say let's talk about that (laughs) no you can't if you know you know just editor editor Um, bleep that out bleep that out thank you i'm not going to (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> so the thing the thing is um we we're talking about uh like the organization of food yep. or the like pattern uh you know like yep. the need to organize so like you know if you have candy you might organize them by size or color yeah or shape or whatever like a, a very specific one that i do all the time is if i'm eating potato chips I will take out a handful and I will eat all of the tiniest bits (laughs) first so that I'm left with the whole chips at the end because those are the best ones. And then I said, oh, that's kind of like what I do because I, with food I'm eating, I will eat the stuff that I'm least excited about first because yeah. I'm, we're saving the good stuff for last. Like you got to save the best fight for last. That way it like lingers yeah. in your mouth and whatever. And we, yeah. neither of us had ever met someone who's done that. Yeah. And that was a big I like, holy it. fuck, you do that too? I was like, you're joking. I like, I've taught, you know, I have, I've known a, a fair amount, I think of neurodivergent people. I've encountered yeah. a fair amount of them, but I've never, I don't think I've ever, spoken nope. that like verbalize that idea to someone before and then also to have someone be like oh yeah of course yeah i saved the I, best bits yes. for last i have been perceived doing it before and other people have been like what are you doing <laughs> me too yeah like if there's like a like a sandwich and i eat all of the outside of the sandwich so i'm left with just like this amorphous middle piece that is <laughs> yeah. the best piece because it's the middle so it it's has like best. everything right but it looks weird because there's no crust left so i clearly i was actively yeah. making a choice to save that piece for last and other people are like what are you doing yeah. and i'm like saving the best bite for last dude like what are you talking about of course every every time i will do that we talked about like you know, I I don't eat meat anymore. But when I did, um, yeah. like if I was eating like a lobster or a crab, I would oh, yeah. crack every oh, single yeah. leg. You got to get the work out of the way. Yeah. Get every single little morsel out and before. And it, I don't know if that's like part of an OCD thing or not either. But it's like I truly could not enjoy it unless i got every single yeah. piece out yeah i do it with uh yeah if i'm cutting if i have to a food that requires cutting i will cut it all first and then eat it because it's just the yeah and it's it's like weirdly linked <clears throat> to like in my brain anyway it's linked to like uh not being able to relax until all my work is out of the way or like all my chores yep. are out of the way it's that uh-huh. same feeling yeah, we talked about that the other night. That I I I had the same exact thing, and it it like I feel that it's worse on days that I'm like struggling with more anxiety. If I'm having a high anxiety mm. day, mm. then I just like will not rest until like I must go to sleep. You know what I mean? Like my body and brain will just keep going, going, going until I'm like, okay, it's like, it's like 12 a.m. and I yes. haven't let myself stop doing stuff because I'm like, gotta check everything off the to-do list. Yeah. The only exception for me would be if I'm in the middle of a hyperfixation. Oh, interesting. Like if I have tasks I need to do, whether it's like eat, do laundry, do some work, whatever, I will have to do them unless I'm in like an active hyperfixation. Then my brain is like, we're doing the hyperfixation. You can do all that other stuff later. Don't even think about it. That's so interesting. Yeah. My, I, I can't, I get a lot of anxiety surrounding like work that needs to be done, whether that's like work, work or like work around my house or what have you. 
and I will be thinking about my hyperfixation all day, and that's <laughs> what I would rather be doing. Sure. But um, like if I if I put it to the side for even like an hour or something, I would feel extreme anxiety and guilt for not huh. just doing the thing I was supposed to be doing. Well, yeah, that's true because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking back to specific moments in time when my hyperfixation was like actively making something or creating something. So mm-hmm. it that still kind of felt like a task I needed to do. I needed to finish that task. So it kind of felt like I was doing a task that needed to be done, but it just happened to be mm. a hyperfixation. So then I would just like sit and oh. do this thing for eight hours. And then I'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, now that that's done, now I'll go finish my laundry or go eat a meal or whatever. Oh, interesting. I've definitely had those days, especially, you know, like I'll make it through a work week and then literally all that I'll be doing from like 5.01 p.m. <laughs> on a Friday yeah. through 9 a.m. Monday morning is doing whatever I'm hyperfixated on. What's Do we what? get super off track? What, what were we talking? What was the thing? <laughs> oh, no, I was going to transition into, uh, I figured this okay. would be a way to go, to go into hyperfixation of the week. You're um, good at that. You're so good at that. I, well, I I've been getting lucky <laughs> and it's been uh, extreme planning foresight planning because i am i have noticed i am not i'm not good at transitions naturally like i have to work to seem good at Mm. transitions which i feel like is a pretty normal neurodivergent if not autistic thing yeah of just being like really blunt and like abrupt in changing topic or Mm. like in conversation um just my brain picking up a thread and being like oh we gotta talk about that now veer left Mm. immediately (laughs) we are talking about this thing that's been this entire podcast. You didn't have to call out the pod like that. But that was well, okay. I, I had thought about it before. I was like, it makes sense. Like, because I had, I've done similar stuff like this in the past. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense why I always struggled with that or felt awkward around moments of transition. It's because like, they were yeah. like physically painful for me to try to achieve. Yeah. Screw them. That's what I say. Who needs them? transition enter yeah <laughs> enter smooth transition <laughs> um well we were talking about hyperfixations and i wanted to ask you what is the deepest <clears throat> hyperfixation you have ever gone on Ooh, baby i got a good one I it's went, embarrassing <laughs> but you go first really it um during the pandemic i became a uh, Harry Styles super fan oh, and a di- and a directioner all at the same time. Oh, wow. and yeah, I'd say for all of 2020, uh, uh, like uh, a full uh, 12. That's big time rush. Yeah. That's not One Direction. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Um, big time rush. I wasn't if, well, uh, the show, not the people. I wasn't going to call you on it, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I'd say for a full 12 calendar months. That's <laughs> that's what I was doing. <laughs> what's the what's give me a give me a 1D fact right now. 1D fact? Just something you like about it. Oh them. no. You know, the th- I I would just end up watching they became like a comfort thing. Yeah. And so I would watch like the same yes. music videos over and over. <laughs> yes. Um I can't tell you how many times I've watched Night Changes over <laughs> and over and over. Oh, that's so good cuz mine I could is so re- similar. I could probably really I could probably recite like I could without watching it, I could probably explain <laughs> visually how the entire <laughs> music video <laughs> looks cold open exterior nighttime um exactly that's so good because mine is ex- it's very similar uh the deepest hyperfixation i went on was i would argue more than a year's worth looking back but it was a little bit more sustained but it was also super intense at the same time um mm. uh it was also a band uh and mine was 21 pilots uh specifically mm-hmm. the singer tyler joseph of 21 pilots i was super mm-hmm. hyper fixated on uh i would watch i've never said this out loud to anybody ever uh yes. yeah uh i would watch like <laughs> i guess in retrospect you can call them fan edits uh yes but it was before tiktok so it was youtube uh, and it was like it'd be yeah, like yeah. sixteen minute oh, clips of there. just like oh, Tyler Joseph yep. being funny, and like I would just like watch that shit. Uh, and looking back now, I'm just like, ah, oh, that's so cute. Like I, I had such that's a hyper so fixation. Cute. Um, yeah, it was just a comfort thing, and like it, 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was like, I, I'm just repeating myself. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, yeah, if you haven't gotten, you're not a real fan, okay? If you yeah. haven't been so hyper fixated that you landed on fan edits and fan fiction, okay? Yeah. See, I'm currently getting fan edits on TikTok of those four kids who play Wordle together. Uh I don't know what that is. Oh, wow. I'm shocked you haven't gotten one of their TikToks. There's a group of like four to five people who all just like play Wordle against each other. Um, mm-hmm. And it's very cute, very wholesome. And I just like watching it because it's just like, I don't know, my monkey brain loves that shit. I'm just like, oh, let me figure out the Wordle with you, whatever. Uh, but now I've been watching them so much. TikTok is like, oh, you like that? Here's some <laughs> here's some fan edits that, that are a little steamy of these people. And I'm like, no, no, no. I just want to solve the Wordle today. <laughs> I'm just uh, just wholesome. I just wanted to do yeah, a little. <laughs> keep it PG TikTok. Um, th- that's great to know though. That Not we have a similar me. Hyper Not me. Send me all the X-rated. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't be do careful that. what you say around just your phone, kidding. man. You're gonna log on to TikTok later and be <gasps> visually assaulted by uh, some oh, fan man. edits of people playing Wordle. No, I don't want Wordle. I was gonna say, you know, shirtless Harry Styles is fine. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you want to send just. Phone. That's my feed currently. Um, yeah. I bet because I just said Tyler Joseph so many times, my phone's going to give me a 21 pilot <laughs> for the first time in years. Um, Incredible. Thank you. I would... Uh, <laughs> see, I'm running out of transition skill. I used it all up too early in the pod and now I'm out of... Now I'm out of don't. Games. Just don't. <laughs> Fight against it. Okay. Uh, We're done oh, with that now. Going on next, to the next thing. Uh, you're going to like this one. Wait. How, how should I bring it up? Um... <laughs> Next, we're on to the next thing and and journaling. Oh, hey Matt, good. do you very journal? Good. That's gonna be a subtle. <laughs> the seam is invisible on that cut. Right it's there. invisible. Uh, I I well I I do morning pages because uh, I'm an artist way bitch uh, and I do mm-hmm. the artist way currently. Uh, so I do morning pages. Yeah. But I've started to do a different kind of journaling of like tracking journaling i guess you'd call it like uh yeah with an app specifically called dailyo where you yeah. log which i know you use as well uh is mm-hmm. you log like your overall mood from like wow to like and then uh there's like what did you do that day so then it's just a very easy correlation of like oh when i felt like it's because i didn't do anything and when i felt like wow i yeah. did everything yes yeah yeah, I, d- I, d- I truly can't remember if I talked about this in the episode before this one or if I'm going to talk about it in the next one after, but um, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's a lot of really cool apps out there that are great for tracking symptoms and your mood, stuff like that. That's what I yeah. specifically talked on the pod about, which is like I th- I felt like I was I was really down on myself and was like I feel like I'm having bad days all the time or I'm just like always in a bad mood and tracking stuff like that actually tracking my real symptoms and like you said the stuff that you did throughout the day that like adds up to you having a good day or a bad day was really helpful for me because I could see what specific activities I was doing that contributed to my overall like mental state and then also just like visually you can see as you keep using it over time you can see like a month's view of like how many good days have I had how many bad days have I had and why did I have those and what kind of habits can I try to incorporate in my daily life that will like help give me the result that I want yeah I really like it I mean it's only been a couple days for me but I really like it because I think it helps with my kind of like that black and white thinking almost of uh Mm -hmm. if one thing goes wrong in my day it's easy for me to just instinctively look back and be like ah wasn't a good day but this forces me to like it'll ask like how was your day and then I'll think back and be like well that was hard but actually it was a good day and then it'll help me remember like oh yeah I actually, I had a good day, even though this one thing like made it difficult for a little bit or something. A hundred percent. Like, like yesterday I had a really good day. I also had a meltdown, but it was still a good day. Like, did you really? Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's one of the, you know, and I don't know, maybe this is like a bigger topic to talk about yeah. in this episode or another one, but like 
some th- certain things, some feelings, some sensory things, some just like mood related things, anxiety or whatever. Sometimes you d- it just like triggers you to like have a full on yeah. meltdown. And for me, it doesn't necessarily have to be 10 bad things have happened to me that day. Mm-hmm. And then I like spiral or, or fully have a meltdown or something. But sometimes it's also just like, I feel one emotion really strongly. Yes. Um, and I don't even know if I remember what it was. But I've also, f- like, meltdowns have... <sighs> what am I yeah. saying? When I was originally diagnosed, I think I was afraid of that term and of yeah. that feeling. And was like, if I have a meltdown, um, I'm fucking up. And I need to, like, yes. try to avoid that. Or I need to, like work around that or like it's it's not good or it's not healthy and really truly the opposite of that has become true for me yeah if i'm feeling like a big like welling up of emotion like it feels really good to just get all of oh that oh my out. god it's the and best that by, that, yeah just like screaming or crying yes. or doing whatever um and sometimes it's like over you know like a really sad song or something that I listen to. And I just oh, like have some like um, personal attachment to that song. Yeah. And it always makes me feel a certain way when I listen to it. And then I start crying and then like it just yeah. inevitably ends up being like a meltdown or something, which, yeah, it's not, it uh, it's, I, I don't want to think of that as a negative experience for me because it's like so cleansing for me oh, at the yes. same time like it, I, it needed to come out in the past actually just i've i haven't thought about this in forever this is my daily oh that's an autistic thing uh was yeah. i would always describe myself as a wind-up toy i would feel like a wind-up toy until mm-hmm. i got to a point where i couldn't handle everything and then i would unwind and let all the energy loose which is definitely just like a a buildup of that emotion until a meltdown would come mm-hmm. and then i'd let it all out um mm-hmm. yeah i feel that way specifically i think this emotion i associate i think the emotion that overwhelms me the most quickly is sadness i mm-hmm. think that one more than anything it, sadness and then like you throw in a little like pinch of fear in there and like that's like a perfect mm-hmm. concoction like that's meltdown mm-hmm. meltdown city ticket for one i'm going right there like uh and only recently, yeah, I've started to just, like, embrace it. And I don't, like, enjoy it in a way. Like, celebrate it, I think, mm-hmm. is a better way to say it. Like, yeah. Uh, versus, like, before, I knew it was an autistic meltdown sensory experience. I would, like, self-infantilize myself, you know? Or I would totally. be like, don't be a child. Don't do, Like, I don't need yeah. to do this. I understand it's not a big deal. But now I'm learning, like, oh, I can mentally understand it's not a big deal and still have a meltdown about it and be an adult and not make myself feel bad about it. Yeah, I had that same thing. I definitely grew up in a family that, like, uh, you know, just wasn't super supportive about most feelings. (laughs) So, like... You know, crying was like something that you needed to just, you know, suck, suck it, up it up and move on yep. or whatever. So I feel the same way about like, I've always been really hard on myself with that. But I, I also wanted to say that I I also have a really hard time identifying my feelings. I'm truly thinking about getting one of those like emotion wheels. Bro, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, because I think, I think that would be really helpful for me. Like yesterday you know i'm like feeling some feelings and i know i need to have the meltdown because there's actual emotions that i'm not identifying i can't figure out what's triggered it and what real life um thing is making me feel some kind of way so it i don't know that that's that's a difficult like thing for me to wrap my brain around right now it's like like I know I feel the meltdown is coming so I like give it less resistance I let it come as it as it normally will and I know I'll feel better at the end of it but where I'm where I need to maybe uh do some more reflection or identifying is like figuring out 
like like giving a name to whatever it was that led me there yeah i feel like i'm just like babbling right now no, no, no. But, but um letting the meltdown down happen but then also maybe going back and saying what i actually was originally feeling was sadness yeah. because of xyz yeah yeah that's hard and- for me <clears throat> yeah, and I've also noticed, which uh, leads into the one other note I had, so that's perfect, uh, was, uh, where are you? Where did I write you? Oh, yes. Um, I'm also, I, I've come to realize I am way more sensitive to rejection than I thought, because at first mm. I thought rejection sensitivity was like solely feeling rejection about yourself. Like you put yourself out there and then you get rejected. But I've also come to notice that I think is true, I haven't really heard anyone else talk about it, is, like, I'm super sensitive to other people feeling rejected. And if they feel rejected, it makes me really overwhelmed. Like, especially if it's someone I care about. Oh, uh, that's... I haven't ever thought of that. I think that's very endearing. That's very sweet. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, like, I think... I I would think that falls under rejection sensitivity. Like... Uh, sure, being sensitive why not? to it. yeah on the pod it does now we're experts um <laughs> yeah like if if i sense someone around me in general if anyone around me is like feeling a sense of rejection i can pick up on it like super quick but then if there's wow. someone i love or care about feeling rejection or hurt like that can send me into a meltdown mm-hmm. quicker than if i'm experiencing rejection or hurt i feel like ooh that sounds like a therapy issue. <laughs> <laughs> Something that Matt is that needs not, to talk about in therapy. Is that not what this is? Uh, is no, this I, not my therapy session right now? I <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can. Yeah, I can put on the therapy hat if you want. That's that's so. I mean, the like obvious thing would be like, well, why? <laughs> why are you feeling other people's? The, you know, don't perceive me right stronger. now. Don't <laughs> analyze me. Don't do that to me. That's not why I came on here. Why I will are drop other off this call. People's feelings more important than yours, Matthew. Um, because I don't have a joke. I thought I could come up with a joke, but I don't have one. Yeah, because it's not. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'll bring it to my therapist. I already have brought it to my I therapist. Do- I'd be so interested to hear if other people have experienced that because I don't know that I have personal experience with that. I definitely feel pretty acutely aware of how other people are feeling around me, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just a selfish asshole. I don't know. (laughs) But if someone was like feeling rejected, I would like pick up on it and then I'd be like, well, I think actually, (laughs) (laughs) well, I think a part of what it is actually is it does still need to include me in some way. Like if someone, like if someone I love came to me and was like, Hey, this sucky thing happened to me. I would just, you know, I would be there for them and help them through it. Of course. Yeah. But I think if it involved me in some way of like, Hey, you did this thing and it made, and it hurt me. Like that would be much, that's what gets me as opposed to, which maybe is more about the element of guilt than anything. But, but even in a sense of like, I'm I'm not to blame. It's just a thing that happened, and it's like I could theoretically easily understand their oh, yeah. side and not go into meltdown mode on my side. But I find my body just gets overwhelmed with that super quickly. Yeah, I'm thinking of one example in particular that I that's probably not appropriate to share on the pod. But <laughs> there was a, a a fight that I got in with a friend and. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were talking about, it was, it was, it, what I have a really hard time with is like telling people that they hurt my feelings. Oh, yeah. I just like hide it. I just yep. 100% will hide Can't it. Can't do it. And so we were having that kind of discussion and it was really hard for me to just say like, Hey, you hurt my feelings. Um, and so I will just hold on to things for a really, really long time and it, and it, an inappropriately long amount of time had passed since <laughs> yeah. she had hurt my feelings and we ended up having this conversation much farther in the future and then the stuff was shared on both sides about stuff that we both did wrong yeah. and when i like realized a way that i had wronged her yes full meltdown full meltdown i was like i will never emotionally recover from this <laughs> yes yeah it's like 
I think what gets me the most is situations where <clears throat> if someone comes to me and they say like, hey, you upset me or whatever, I'm fine in situations like taking that criticism and being like, oh, I can mm-hmm. understand that. I'm really sorry. But if there's a situation where I feel like I'm still kind of like quote unquote in the right or didn't do anything wrong, but they feel hurt. And mm-hmm. like, I, I would before not voice that and just bend over backwards and be like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry, whatever. But now since, yeah. and, but like, and then trying to voice it like that is what can make my body really overwhelmed. Cause it's, I think it's that yeah. fear of rejection sensitivity and being like, if I stick up for myself yeah. and they don't understand my side, that's going to be extremely sensitive to me. Yes. But also, I have a really hard time uh, moving on from unresolved issues. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. If there's, in this particular case, it was like a pattern of things that had happened over a long period of time. And so, number one, I recognize like a certain pattern of behavior, which is like a neurodivergent thing. Yeah. And then I was also very uncomfortable that we had left a lot unsaid over this long period of time. I felt weird about it. I knew that they felt weird about it. And so I was like, this is going to suck. And we're both going to probably like (laughs) have a full on meltdown about this. But like it needs to be said or we're just going to continue being like extremely uncomfortable in each other's presence. It's just going to be let bad. it. Oh God. Even just thinking about a situation like that gives me anxiety of yeah. like, yeah, of being like <laughs> yeah. I need to talk to this person about this thing. Cause it's, it's like nails on a chalkboard until I do. Yeah. The worst, the worst having to initiate that and be like, actually. And then also <laughs> me being like, feeling so bad of being like not only am i bringing up this really uncomfortable thing (laughs) i'm gonna go a year and a half back (laughs) yeah and be like hey now that i think about it uh our 10-year friendship actually uh (laughs) yeah (laughs) um i mean what else you got for me (laughs) well i mean we're at we're over an hour so i don't know yeah this can be as long as we want. What the, we'll, we'll cut a little bit, I'm sure. If there's one or two more things you want to talk about, let's do it, baby. Um, let me look. I mean, I haven't forgotten about the song. I am stressing about that, I'll be honest. Um, <gasps> damn it, you forgot about it, didn't you? I did. I shouldn't have said anything. Well, uh, we kind of talked about it at the beginning. What, did, did you want to talk more? Hey. Oh, no, no, no. Your... No, no, no. Not about the song I made. <laughs> about what song I would be. Oh, we were like, did we say that? No, we were like, we'll do it at the end. And then I need to come up with a song by the end of the episode. And I haven't done it yet. So I'm still stressing about it, mm. but we'll figure it out. It'll come to me. I'm not worried. Okay. I'm, right. not, I'm not worried. It'll come to me. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling myself that at this point. Oh, I know what song I would be. What would you be? My favorite song of all time is Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody. That's on brand. That's on brand for you. It's super on brand for me um gosh of all time well see because that's your favorite song of all time and i think you kind of would be that song like those are two different things like your favorite song and what song would you be no i know but i feel like it does line up for you yeah that's what that was i I knew you were gonna say that i know you're gonna be like and that's not the question um actually yeah um actually that's not the question but i know that that song is me that's that is a good answer honestly i have really been no one no one listening to this is going to know this song i feel like but uh i really do vibe with sex tape by hippocampus lately and it feels like me it's a vibe um highly recommend looking it up great tune i want to say something really snarky about being like an indie boy or something a soft boy oh (laughs) please i didn't mean it in like a i didn't mean it in like a no one knows this i'm so cool i just like i've i've never met someone who knows that song i haven't okay did you know it before i showed it to you yeah case no you didn't no you did not i was saying case in point before you even spoke because i knew you didn't know it yes you don't know you don't have access to my Spotify library. <laughs> um, I'm an indie boy. It's cool. I pride myself on it, and my ego is really frail, so don't ever call me out on it. <sighs> that frail was a joke. Frail is a great term. 
Frail. I'm a frail. If someone describes me as frail ever, I'll jump off a cliff. I'm a... What? what uh, never mind. Cut that. Thank you. <laughs> I won't. Um, do you have... Do we have other points that we want to talk about? Um, or are we just going to say, bye, fuckers? No. Um... <clears throat> Oh, the one thing I keep talking about that we did speak about earlier was like a, well, uh, we were going to do like a specific segment of like, wait, you do that too? We just kind of talked about it uh, Yeah. with the the food one. But the other one that I loved that I still think about since we talked about it was mm-hmm. uh, how we played as children and how how play was like dictating how other how others played like that was play for us yeah. i just thought that was so funny like your example yeah. of like okay you're going to do this and then no 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 don't do th- you're going to you're going to you're going to come over here and then we're going to do this yeah. and i like my friends <laughs> and i would spend hours crafting a narrative about what we were going to play and then we wouldn't get yeah. to act it out because their parents would come and then i'd be like wait but we didn't even get to we just I, I but then I had to realize in retrospect now I was like oh that was play for me and I just think that that was the cutest thing. Mm-hmm. It's very cute. I um I think we talked about it the other day, which is like I still kind of do this. It was like such it's it, I've always wanted control over mm-hmm. everything in my life. And as a child, we would like you know you'd play house with yeah your little neighbor friends or whatever and i was definitely the person that was like directing the whole thing that was like you are the mom you are the dad you're gonna walk through the door and you're gonna say this (laughs) and then you know that whole thing but also uh we talked a little bit about it's part of like a defense mechanism thing but also i think it's just like good for my brain to act out possible scenarios that could happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I feel like I still do that as an adult. Will like, as a kind of a form of control, will play out a scenario oh, yeah. that feels turbulent. You know. That's oh so yeah. I can like prepare for any yes. possible outcome. Oh totally. And then there's other times where I'll just be catching myself having an imaginary interview about a book I never wrote and speaking about it like I yep. wrote it and whatever. Um, I do have <laughs> yeah. a connection that just made Who's in my that brain. that TikTok creator that did Oh, that? yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. you go. No, no, no. I can look it up. Um, you sent it to me. Uh, yeah, there's a TikTok creator that <laughs> um, specifically did that thing where it's like he sits down at a couch, on his couch, and he's like, oh, yeah, 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 no, oh. I'm so glad you would ask because yeah. <laughs> that's know, actually it really like interesting. Goes into a whole thing. It's really interesting, actually. Uh, that you would ask me Sully that. Finley, Sully Finley. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I was like, I literally commented, "This is the whole reason that I have a podcast." <laughs> it's just because I would find myself alone in my bedroom. Like, what an interesting question. I'm so glad you <laughs> asked me. <laughs> um, and sometimes, I like when I lived alone, like. I would do that shit and then like after I would say something out loud like that of like oh that no that's really interesting because I would stop myself and be like that is the first thing I've spoken out loud today and it was an imaginary yes. conversation yeah <laughs> yes um 100% I did have a connection that might not be true but I feel like it probably is for you and if it is true I think it might you might be like holy fuck all right give it to me do you think you like being a dm in D&D because you could to control the story Shut like they did up. as a kid. You, ooh, ooh. Oh, the low hanging fruit. Okay, my my stepmom said the same thing because I was I like told her uh, that I had started this this campaign or whatever, and she started digging into it a little deeper because she has she, like she has a degree in psychology, and so she was like, "So what is interesting about that, Tisha?" And after like talking to me for like ten minutes, she was like, "Okay, it's a god complex. That's what's oh, going on." I wasn't gonna go that far. I just was gonna make it a neurodivergent thing. I'm not calling you God. Well, I mean that's true. You could take away this podcast at any moment. So. <laughs> Come on. It is a power thing, I think. Um, do you actually think it's a power thing? I don't know. I do. You know, I mean, if I'm just being real, I do kind of like being able to like make a control ruling the story on yeah. everything. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I like well, creatively, separately, I do yes. really like to write the story. 
<clears throat> but then like on the day when you're sitting at the table and someone's like, oh, my character Denied. wants yeah. to do this. Yeah, I do like <laughs> having the control and the power to be like, yes, you can do that or like, absolutely not. It's not going to work like that. I've only ever played D&D once and I just, I just was a big buffoon. I just goofed off and did weird shit and died immediately. But yeah, uh, that sounds fun. I want to get into D&D. It's so fun. I can't. So your your character fully died. Um. Well, we it was like a we did it for like one episode of a thing. It was just like a little mini arc oh, for like a two hour story. Okay, like, okay. and so I was like, oh, I just created a little dude, and I was like, I'm just gonna go crazy. Yeah. And he gave it his fun. all. R.I.P. That our our group. What was his name? Um. I was gonna say Squeebo, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Squeebo. Wow, Squeebo. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. <clears throat> my my table, I'd say it's like 75% just joking around, like oh, doing yeah. dumb stuff. Like most of the time, it's my table walking into some shop or inn and just trying to fuck everyone in there. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just walk in and be like, all right, the barkeep, are they hot? I got to know. And then you're like, approved, there was one- approved, approved. Yeah, every time. Literally, I mean, I've encouraged this behavior since episode <laughs> one. I was like, you guys didn't even try. You don't, You didn't even. Yeah, no one wants a cock served... block DM. Like, nobody wants that, you know. Right. Well, in, like, episode one, I was like, there's a big, beefy, sweaty orc coming Ooh, yeah. your direction. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take him to dinner? Absolutely. Yeah, approved. Approved. <clears throat> that's all i had what else, <laughs> what else? that's all what i else? had that's all i had okay incredible gee i hope this was you good you picked the song i hope i did a good job i think I it was did. okay uh, do we like the song pick do i need to pick a different one pick one that people know no come on um you'd be I, f- you hey you, it wouldn't be authentic if you did that you true. picked the song that you picked for a reason that's true um I don't. I don't think I'd be any other any other tune right now. That feels like me. I I dance to it every morning. So yeah. Well, folks, um, let me know if you hate Matt, and I'll tell him that he can't ever come back on the pod. <laughs> I'm looking forward to my future exile. <laughs> Just kidding. And canceling online for this. People, this is what's gonna happen: is people will listen to it and they'll be like, "I only will. I've only <laughs> listened to it because of Matt." No, no. Absolutely. No. People yeah. love the pod. I love the pod. I actually, I genuinely enjoy being uh, here. I appreciate the invite. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Oh, do we want to do, uh, well, I was doing affirmations at the end, but we don't have to do that. We can just say, be kind to yourself. Absolutely. Love ya. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Every, you, you're worth Mwah. it. Bye-bye. Everyone bye. is worth it. Bye. Bye.